Okay guys, hi everyone, SoCal Marine, trying to wrap up this outboard, um, little outboard series I'm doing. Alright, so the last thing that can cause low, um, no spark is if your engine does not crank fast enough. If you have lost all spark on all your cylinders, it's going to be one of two or three things. Alright, first thing is... These yellow wires are the charging wires that come from the stator. All they do is charge your battery, all right? They usually connect on here. You'll see there's another two yellow wires. They go into the regulator rectifier. This charges your battery. If this thing's bad, all you can do is just disconnect these yellow wires, you know, from these that usually sit there on the little bar and just run it for a few seconds. And if your spark magically reappears, this is faulty and you just need to change it. Right, let's say you do that test and it's the same, no spark on all cylinders. Now, you have to make sure that you're getting a, a high RPM cranking. If your outboard's going hung, 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 and laboring and going too slow, there isn't enough speed in the magnets to make enough electricity. So you've got to make sure that you've got a did 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 like a nice high-pitched sound from the starter. Um, if you're not getting that, your battery's old, it's not charged, you've got a problem with the cables, uh, you might have problems here, you might have to take these connections off and really make sure they're clean, make sure your ground is good. And then you have a slave solenoid here, these can fail as well. These are just Ford style things, you can buy this at any parts store, it's a generic slave solenoid. Um, they can go out, especially if they get a bad ground, they'll just click. And uh, the starters as well, but before you change these, just make sure everything's good before you just go and buy new starters because the aftermarket stuff isn't nearly as high quality as these OEM ones. It's better to have these rebuilt. Okay, back to no spark on all cylinders. All right, presuming you've got a good cranking speed and it's all dead, you've taken these off, um, the stator wires, or the, you can just take the yellow ones from this off. If the spark is still gone, you can put all that back together. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is look for the tack wire. Usually it's a gray wire um, and that color will change as the years go by. Take the tack wire off because the tack wire usually just attaches to one of these yellow ones off the stator. A faulty tack would knock, knock the charging system and possibly the spark system down too. I like to just take those and check. Now, the most important test you can ever do on an outboard, especially if you've just bought one and it's new and you don't know what the condition of it is instead of just going and trying to crank it up and blowing the pack every pack on every outboard has a kill wire all right on this one it's on the bottom left here and it's yellow and black which is what it also is on mercury's find the kill wire now listen to me very closely remove it over here from the pack and then you Put your multimeter between this and I gotta I gotta think about this for a second. Ground. You want to make absolutely sure that there is no positive coming out of this thing at all. And you turn the key on and off, on and off, on and off. And you need to make absolutely sure that you're not getting any positive volts coming out of this wire. So you just put your probe on the the wire and the other one on ground and you turn the key on and off many times now i have had it show 0.2 volts to 0.4 volts which is okay but if you get anything like a volt or more the moment you do that you're going to blow this pack um, so generally speaking you shouldn't have almost anything over there uh, that's that's critical as well all right so if you take the kill wire off the pack and you try and run the motor and suddenly you've got spark um, then when you turn your key on basically what what happens on outboard is it disconnects this this is just the ground so if I take the kill wire off the pack here and I run the motor and it's carrying on I can just take a wire from anywhere on the ground and I can touch that terminal it's going to shut the motor down so outboards are the opposite to cars where you turn on and you have 12 volts going to a coil like I explained earlier these things don't need electricity to run the moment that flywheel spins and this thing goes on its own it's not like you can cut the power to it 
you put a ground onto the pack. That's how these things get shut off. And so the kill wire, that's why they have special ignitions for outboards. Because in the off position, you have to have a closed connection between the ground and the pack. You can't put an automotive one in there, it's never going to work. So that's just some extra ketchup for the hot dog to put in your brain so that you're a little smarter. Now, I'm going to give you another little thing here, right? The link and sink adjustments on these things. Um, what you can see here is a little cam. This is the carburetors, okay? When you accelerate, it does this. You can see there's a, there's a small little gap over there. And this is the trigger. And usually you can't actually set your idle like you can on a car where you have a set screw over here. The idle screw on an outboard controls the advance, the idle timing. That's how you set your idle. All right, you're not opening the carburetor butterflies. These things need to stay shut at idle. They cannot really be open. And it's very good for you when you are at idle, when you start to accelerate, that the little arm that pulls on the trigger moves forward a little bit, just a little bit like this. It just has to go a little bit like that before you start opening the carburetors. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna raise the idle with the timing only because that'll make it a lot cleaner. If you have this, the carburetors open, the instant you accelerate, you're kind of like instantly adding fuel. But that, that first couple of degrees of timing, it's, it's better to have it just on the timer base before it contacts the little cam over here. And there's all these kind of little adjustments you can do. So just make sure that when your carburetors are at idle, you know, you have like a, a little bit of a gap there. Now that is going to vary. It's not a, a, a complete rule, but I generally try and do that on all of them. So that when you accelerate that first few degrees, as I've mentioned, you're using only timing, just a little couple of degrees like that. And then your plugs are not going to foul as much because you're not just going to add two stroke oil instantly every time. And it's going to run a lot cleaner. Anyways, guys, that is about as much as I can give you right now and um, I really hope that you guys have a great understanding of outboards now and how you can do some kind of backwards engineered testing to figure out what's going on and like I said sometimes there's problems I mean look at this like where's these original the original wires for this they don't have these I was just troubleshooting with these but they have little wire rings in there and if you pull this off, they will rotate in the boot. And when you go to put it on, you could completely have the, the, the rings not seated over the plug. So you have to make sure that you can look in there and see the little round hole and pinch this with your fingers and make sure that when you go on, you feel it going click, click, click as the spark plug pushes through those three rings. There's little things like that that can throw you off. If you just pull this off and go, oh, it looks good, and you put it back on, you might not even have a connection in there. Stuff like that you gotta look out for. And then these outboards like solid, solid um, core wires, like motorbikes, old 80s bikes. Um, they will work on regular plug wires. I just cut these off and threaded the silicon fibers in here. It works just fine. I don't actually think it's too much of a problem. I'm not sure why that would be a problem. Some people will be like, yeah, yeah, you can't do that. Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, it runs the same with these as not. So that's up to you guys to decide. But anyways, thanks for watching. And oh, you know what? I'm going to give you one last tip. All right. So this doesn't have a telltale, right? And the thermostat housing, it sits way down here. If you've had a water pump that's blowing its little pieces up, and you've got the leg off like I do here, what you can do is back flush the system. Just find any of these ports where the water kind of goes into the head or out the telltale. The best way is to find the thermostat housing. Usually it's on top here with two little bolts. Take it out and shove a garden hose in there. And you can back flush anything that might have come up here out the bottom of the leg before you put the leg back in. Very good tip um, just to make sure that it's clean. And uh, that's about it. I got to get back to work. Thanks for watching, guys, and safe boating.